Thanks for the support as a channel member, Rexmas1. Oh, I'm afraid this one is going to upset the people who love the Kev only plays a 4-2-3-1 ever narrative. We've, uh, we've changed tactics again to a tactic I haven't used in the Premier League maybe ever. And it might be taking us to the Champions League. Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 33 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two Premier League games for you. We're at home against Brighton, away against Bournemouth. But the big news is that since you were last with me, we've won five Premier League games in a row, playing a 4-2-4. We're playing two strikers in the Premier League. Two strikers and advanced wingers in the Premier League, like proper maniacs. And it's working. We beat Spurs with it. We beat Man United with it. We beat Chelsea with it. And all of that puts us six in the league. Remember, of course, we are already qualified for the Conference League because of winning the Carabao Cup yesterday. And we now, with eight games to go, find ourselves in sixth place, which would be enough for the Europa League, I think, but only three points behind Liverpool, who are in fourth place. And in fact, only one point behind Manchester United with two games in hand. And it's pretty likely that top five is probably Champions League qualification. So... If we just keep on winning, all we've got to do is keep on winning. If we keep on winning, we'll be in the Champions League next year. Miles Lieburn is the top scorer in the Premier League. 20 Premier League goals for him this season in 27 appearances. And he's not even playing as our main attacking striker anymore. I'd like to point as well, we've, we've also got more injuries than most of our most other teams in the league um, but it's actually Solari who's playing as the more attacking of the two of course we brought him in back in the summer with a view to him eventually taking over as our main man up from he still only started three games but they are the last three and he's scored four goals in those three matches Solari looks like he might be the real deal the one downside of this system is it does kind of exclude Alfie Devine. I guess we could fit him in in defensive midfield. We've been trying to shoehorn him in there for several years. Um, but part of me also thinks if we could get £50 million pounds for him, I'd probably take the 50, I'll probably take the £50 million pounds rather than trying to shoehorn him into a position that doesn't work for him. I don't know how long-term realistic this system is. I don't know how realistic it is for a team potentially in the Champions League to have Miles Leeburn playing up front for them. But, I mean, you can't argue with his goal return in his two seasons in the Premier League. So, I guess we just go with it. This is the team that will take on Brighton. It's Hansen in goal. Um, Quintana still not winning his place back in the team. I think I'm pretty confident at this point that Hansen is our goalkeeper. Quintana um, has actually accepted being downgraded to a backup keeper. So we've we've resolved that problem. Can't imagine it's going to do his Uruguay international in, uh, experience any good. But I don't know, maybe Uruguay don't have another good keeper. But it's Hansen in goal. A back four of Sousa, Suarez, Kabasi and Dubai. We would love to be able to sign and Suarez permanently but I mean if we can get 50 million for Alfie Devine we just throw it all at Nikolai Suarez that's logic right um, Homo and Oscar in midfield and then Stanis and O'Donoghue supporting Lieburn and Solari playing a front four like that in the Premier League in uh, what is it 2030 seems absolutely bonkers but there's no arguing that it's working five wins in a row it's just, it just works. Lieburn being there to do all the hold up play, be the big man, be the big physical guy. And then Solari just using his pace and technical ability. And it's just a good old fashioned big man, little man with wingers supporting them system. And it's working a treat. Here is Solari. He's actually lost the ball there, but Oscar is there to collect, plays it across to Suarez. And now Suarez forward to Solari and now Lieburn doing his lovely back to goal target man hold up play stuff he actually has to do less as part of this system than obviously he had to do when he was playing as the main man up front but he is burst forward here and it's Lieburn looking to get on the end of that cross he does connect but he was always on the stretch and it ends up going wide for a, uh, a Brighton goal kick, but an early demonstration that we definitely play with some serious attacking intent as part of this system. And Brighton need to be uh, need to be on their best behaviour if they're going to come out of this game with anything. They've already scored. 
I'm still trying. I'm, st- I'm trying to do the speech, and they've already scored. As you can see, we are back at the Pirelli as well, which, um, I mean, at least we didn't spend 25 million upgrading the Peter Shilton Stadium, I guess. But it's pretty clear this stadium not fit for purpose. Here we are winning trophies, trying to get ourselves in the Champions League. All the while, this ground is just going to be dragging us back. So we need. Uh, we need a new stadium and we need one we need one announcing this summer realistically if i'm not to go into full on job hunt mode as much as i would love to take burton into europe and do a season in europe every season we go on playing in this stadium is a season where being where we're being held back financially because of it obviously we had most of this season playing at the peter shilton stadium over in nottingham so that convinced me to stick around for a little bit longer um i'm you know, it's going to take a lot to convince me to stick around if we're having to play a season at the pirelli uh brighton are actually just behind us in the league as well so this is uh this is quite the big game i know we've beaten some good opposition and spurs on our little winning run that we've been on but full disclosure that winning run in real life happened about three days ago um i've not i'm recording this on monday I think I recorded the previous episode like last Wednesday or Thursday. So we've got the the whole not loading up the save for several days thing. A football manager could be looking to punish me. Of course, what I have been doing is playing the new Twitch save, which if you haven't checked it out yet, you should. We're managing East Fife up in Scotland. It's a one club save with East Fife where we're going to try and win the Premier League. I'm live on Twitch tonight from about 7pm if you want to come along and watch along live. Um, the highlights of everything so far are over on Lujo 2 as well highlights come out on their 10 o'clock daily so it's pretty easy to get yourself up to speed with what's going on in that save and come and hang out with us over on twitch tonight we'll have a lovely old time good defensive work from lee burn there i mean it's a it's a little bit of a shame that that's led to us conceding a goal because lee burn does well and then i think it was homo does well as well and both of them very solid defending but because football manager things, they win the ball, but then it immediately ends up back with the opposition anyway. He kind of won it and didn't know what to do. Homo then wins it, doesn't know what to do. And now we're 2-0 down, and this is this is not the rush towards the Champions League that I was hoping we were going to be witnessing in today's episode. Although, I guess, like I say, if top five ends up in the Champions League, we'd still have a game in hand on Man United after this. So we could conceivably lose this game and still end up in fifth place at the end of the episode, depending on how fixtures lie. Um, Sousa has just got us a goal back. He is regularly pushed forward for corners as a fullback. I leave my set-piece guy to... uh guy my set piece coach to decide who goes where for the set pieces i tell him the kind of corners and stuff that i want you've used a new set piece creator i tell him i want these in swingers and i want to vary between near post far post and short but the actual placement of the individual players is all left to him it's interesting that susa always finds himself forward he wouldn't be someone who in the old world of the old set piece creator he's not someone i would be sending forward for corners he's only five foot eleven his jumping reach is nothing to write home about his heading's nothing to write home about but for some reason he is always in the mix and does quite well with it as well so leave leave the set piece guy to it i guess maybe he knows something i don't maybe there's some kind of secret extra attribute that you would look at when lining somebody up to get on the end of a corner that Sousa has in spades. Long throw, ends up coming straight back at us by O'Donoghue, looking for Sousa again. And that's my point again. Once again, set piece, this time a long throw, and Sousa right in there in the mix again. He's always there. Lee Burn now, plays it back to O'Donoghue, trying to find the cross, and it's a corner. Probably aiming at Sousa again, because why not? We've got Lee Burn in the team. We've got all the big defenders in the team, but why not aim for the left back? It's it's logical. Solari looking for the far post. Kabasi was there, who I uh, I notice. I say I notice. Someone told me on Twitter. Apparently, Kabasi made his debut for Barcelona in real life at the weekend. Um, he's another one of these 15, 16 year olds like Lamine Yamal. So we've got ourselves a proper Barcelona superstar wonder kid here. I found him first. I found him at least two weeks before Barcelona found him. So. Once again, universe, you're welcome for that one. I discovered him. Um, that's unfortunate. Offside ref? I mean, I don't see how it can be offside. We have a man on the line. But the ref is looking at now. He has. I mean, there's, there's no way that was ever going to be offside. I actually thought it was Evan Ferguson who got on the end of it. 
Um, okay, that's why it was potentially off offline, offside, because the guy who actually scored it was on the goal line next to our guy. I feel a little more hard done by now. I think it was probably going in from Ferguson anyway, which I would have just given it based on that. Solari is in, though. Oh, that's a lovely effort from him. Um, I think he was offside. He was offside. He's, it's hit the post as well. I actually thought it was a save, but um, it looks lively. But uh, Brighton, I, I tried to call him Barcelona. Brighton are doing us at our own game here. These set pieces. Evan Ferguson is an absolute nightmare. I mean, Miles Liebert has obviously been good for us this year, but I think Ferguson demonstrating today, if we put a really, really good target man in this system, imagine how good we'd be then if we could swap Lee Byrne for Ferguson because Ferguson is just on another level with it and he is just causing us all kinds of problems. We are getting thumped here. After five wins in a row, we are being punished for not playing the game for a few days and we are getting absolutely smashed by Brighton and I am not enjoying it very much. Um, let's get Alfie Devine on in midfield. There we go. Um, I mean, there's no there's no point really trying to do anything to try and turn the game around. It's gone. They're three goals ahead of us. It's uh I mean we can I think we can berate in this situation. I am very unhappy with how things are going. Pocho is gonna take the in swinger looking for that far post where Lee Byrne he's just not Evan Ferguson, is he? As much as I love him. That might be if we're serious about sticking with the four two four, and I know it's mad when he's the Premier League's top scorer. But maybe that's an area where we need to do a bit of an upgrade. Um, also, a little bit frustrating that we don't have any backup strikers when they're both on the pitch from the start, so we can't actually swap things around. Let's get Ainita on. Let's get Pajoy on, and just see the game out. This has been this has been a disaster today. Hopefully, whoever we play next, Bournemouth was it? I think we play next. Hopefully, they're a bit rubbish. Oh, yeah, they're, they're rubbisher. They're rubbisher than Brighton. That's proper English right there. So hopefully we can get back to winning ways. We don't need to suffer another one of these set pieces. They have humiliated me at my own game today. I have not enjoyed it. Brighton are probably going to be ending up in Europe. We, on the other hand, I mean, we can still, we're still only one point behind Manchester United with a game in hand. We do have to go and beat Bournemouth now. That adds a little bit, a little bit of pressure back on after what had been a very good run of form. When do we play them? Next weekend, right? Fingers crossed. That doesn't happen again because that that wasn't on the script for the run-in of this season. I can tell you that. Well, despite being battered by Brighton, we're making no changes for the Bournemouth game because. Did I mention we won five in a row leading into it? This has been working quite well. Um, what I also didn't mention um, is we have started on summer transfer stuff in so much as we've got a few players who we wanted rid of who were on their way out of the club. So uh, Pocho is going to be joining San Lorenzo in the summer um, and Zaruki is going to be joining Birmingham in the summer. So two of the older players that we didn't really want to keep around. They were, they were the emergency trying to keep us in the Premier League buys last year I think we've moved on beyond them and uh, good to see them out of the door early on so that we can start reinvesting some of that money in next gen wonder kids which I am starting the process of and hopefully by tomorrow's episode should be able to show you which ones we've managed to secure there's like five or six we're going for we can't afford them all um but Oh, it's, it's exciting times. But unchanged team for Bournemouth, really quite important if we've got serious Champions League aspirations, which we don't really. But the situation we found ourselves in, I guess we have to develop some. Um, but if we are serious about getting into the Champions League, we've got to win this game. So let's go win this game and see where we end up. I, d I don't know that we're going to get a better opportunity to get in the Champions League in the next two or three seasons. Uh, but the way the league has kind of shaken up this season, there's there's not obvious... I mean, there's there's a top three and then there's a another seven or eight clubs of which we are part that are chasing the fourth and the fifth spots. There's no guarantee, of course, that a fifth spot is a Champions League qualification spot. So we need to be very careful not to get too overexcited if we do end up managing to secure a fifth place finish because it might still just be Europa League but even Europa League is an upgrade on the Conference League that we're qualified for currently we finally get the first highlight of the game it's Lieburn dropping deep and plays it out 
to Dubai. And now O'Donoghue has got space to run into. Can he find the cross? Drives it across goal. And there were several players lined up in there and not, none of them were able to get on the end of it. And that was a big chance that has gone begging there for us early on. The only real proper chance of that first half. And we cannot be that wasteful if we are going to get into the Champions League. Uh, Stannis has picked up a knock. So we are going to bring on Pocho. Obviously, we're going to need to strengthen the uh, the wide areas, backup and whatnot um, for the summer because we do re still rely on bringing Pocho off the bench quite a lot. And he's not going to be here next year, but... I mean, it, it, especially if we qualify for the Champions League, signing players should not be a problem because theoretically that will come with a big pile of cash along with it. Although the way Football Manager works, there's no guarantees the cash comes straight away and there's also no guarantees we're going to get into the Champions League because we've given away a penalty here and this could be an incredibly disappointing episode <laughs> after how well things have been going. It's, it's potentially all falling apart in front of us here. And that does make me a little bit sad. Can Hansen please make a penalty save? Of course he can't because they've got Ward Prowse, who must be like 70 years old now. Um, but Ward Prowse isn't going to miss a penalty. And we're 1-0 down. And now we have it all to do against a Bournemouth team that are very much in a relegation battle. And uh, this is this is just blowing an opportunity here at the moment. Um, we're demanding more. We've gone attacking. And we really do need to... I mean, if we, if we lose this, we're going back to the 4 2 3 1 for the next match, that's for sure. We've been away from it long enough. I've played enough football manager over the years to know <laughs> that when you do get that email that we got a couple of a couple of episodes ago telling you to change the tactic, um, you don't have to stay away from it forever. We've been away from it long enough. I imagine it will start magically working again. That's that's poor from Hansen. Quintana's looking at that and having a little bit of a chuckle. And I'm inclined to agree with him. That wasn't great from Hansen. And now we're 2-0 down. And this this is not okay. Bournemouth are rubbish. And we are even worse than them at the moment. And any Champions League aspirations we might have had are probably out the window based on how this these couple of matches in this episode have gone. Unless we can claw something back, and it needs to be three goals, we need to we need to win the game. Even a draw here wouldn't have been enough for us to come out of these two matches. I mean, I was kind of hoping we'd come out of them with six points, not zero points. What a world we could have been! We'd have been in fourth place if we'd have won them both, like we should have done. Um, Lee Burns now picked up a knock, which is probably going to force us to change the system back because uh, without Lee Burn, this system really doesn't work, but we'll stick with it for the rest of today. We might as well. We've already lost. Um, I mean, I guess we can go very attacking. It's never that effective when you're more than one goal behind, but maybe Hanson will go forward and redeem himself for the second goal. I can't harm, can't fault him for the penalty, um, but that second goal, he just was completely wrong-footed. And, I mean, it's certainly not just on him. We've not had a shot on target in the match. That has been really, really poor from us. Uh, I don't think we are getting in the Champions League. Although... And we will look at the league table and give you an although. Although, I mean, we're down in seventh now. We do still have a game in hand on fifth place Manchester United. We have to be wary of Spurs, who have two games in hand on them. So Spurs are more likely to do the job. Um, I mean, even winning the game in hand, actually, still leaves us behind United. I think we've probably lost the opportunity for Champions League with two really poor performances. That being said, though, we do have a relatively easy run in from here. Leeds, Sheffield United, Leicester, Brentford, Wolves. You'd expect us to do another five wins on the bounce from there, which means that final game of the season that you'll see tomorrow away against Liverpool could be <laughs> incredibly important. But I do feel like we've, we've probably blown it there today which is sad. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.